Hi everybody, Ben here from Artless Ordinary. So, I haven't done one of these in a little while, so I'm going to do an infinity pour. Wasn't quite sure what colours I wanted, but I ended up choosing purples. I was going to go purples and yellows, but the yellow, um, I added a little bit of orange to it and it went very orange. So I put a little bit too much orange in, but that's okay. It happens, but uh, they still should, hopefully they still should look quite good. So the issue I normally have is with my yellows, they're all transparent except for one. And I really wanted an opaque yellow. So I used Iraldo Di Polo Wattle, which is an opaque yellow. That was for the plain yellow. For the orangey one, that was Montmartre yellow with a tad of orange, but um, it came out very orangey. Well, not as rich as the actual normal orange that comes out. And then I've got Montmartre light purple and Montmartre purple. So, they are the, the paints. So what I did is, they're 33 grams paint, 57 grams Floetrol, and 22 grams water, except the Eraldo Di Polo yellow is a lot more thick, so I've had to add more water into that to just get it to a similar consistency to the others. So, as you can see, there's a bit more in that cup, but that's all you really need to do is just try to get it so it looks a little bit more even with, um, with its consistency. So, from here, um, I have a... 12 by 16 canvas and I have two cups so we virtually just have to make up um, uh, uh, two different so one side's going to be the purples one side's going to be the yellows and I'll show you the infinity part once I start pouring but with this I'm going to pour half of it the purple in then half the light purple it's not a complete dirty pour, but you kind of do do it a little bit like a dirty pour where you just kind of pour them into the cup. Um, I do usually add a bit of black and a bit of white, but I don't have any white. I went to the shop to buy some and they don't have any left. So I just thought I'd leave it out. And I didn't want to add black if I wasn't adding white. Now we just go a light purple. So it kind of does mix a little bit, but at the same time, it's not completely because um, you just kind of pour it in a little bit, like pour. You don't kind of spread it around or anything like that. So I'll get those out the way. So that's the purple cup done. Put that aside. Now we'll get the yellow one done. So again, a little bit of dust in there. Pour half the yellow in, then half the orange, then the rest of the yellow, and I always pour it at the same spot. So it kind of churns up a little bit. Um, it just will give you a different shade of, so you'll, you'll get plain yellow, you'll get yellow that's a little bit orangey, and you'll get orange that's a bit yellow, and then you'll get plain yellow, I mean plain orange. So it just gives you that better assortment of colours by doing it that way. And it does create effects. So when you pour things in, in in that type of a dirty pour fashion, um, it just creates effects within the paints churning. I am recording, aren't I? Yes. Always my biggest worry these days. So now we have the yellow and orange. Now. You mix these with Floetrol. If you use glue, they blend too much. The Floetrol seems to keep the colours a little bit separate. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now, we do the Infinity Pour part. 
which is where you get the two cups. And as you pour, you do a circular motion like this. So they overlap into each other and it ends up giving you kind of like ribbons that run in and underneath kind of as a layer. Now, this doing pouring the cups can be a little bit of a challenge. If you're unsure if you can do it, just stand here with your hands and do that circular motion. Um, just teaches your brain a little bit how to do it. Otherwise, you can kind of get stuck halfway and it doesn't work out the same way. So just do your hands like that. Make sure you've got the pattern going. And sometimes once you pick up the cups, <laughs> it just doesn't work as good either. I am going to pinch these a little bit. So they're a little bit more of a spout. And I don't want to pour them out super fast, but it's hard when you're doing one in each hand. You've got to try your best to keep the levels a little bit even. So... I'm trying not to do what I just did, which was put the pour part of the cup into the canvas. It's trying to run off the edge, so I'm just going to move it a little bit. So this paint's a bit more fluidic um, because you've added more water than you normally would. It also can take a little bit longer to dry, so keep that in mind as well. Um, I have added um, metallic paints, I've added pearl coloured paints in these and they've turned out really good. I haven't done one with um, cloud paint yet, which might be something I might do. So your best bet is you don't want to, oops, you don't want to over mix them, but you do want to kind of get to the corners and so you pick an area which you kind of want to, I might tip off this side first. So I just go relatively calm until I can see paints running off and then I go over and come back. Now while I'm up this way, I'm going to do this corner. It is a lot more runny, so you will notice when you pour, you've got to kind of watch that you don't pour too much off. Over and come back. I'm coming all the way down to this bottom side. I think I'm going to lose those couple of little cells that are appearing, but it happens. Yeah. Over and come back. You can use a corner catcher if you like. If you think that that would save a certain part of the artwork that you don't want to lose. over and come back. Now, what you gotta do from here is you gotta work out if there's any part of this picture that you would rather remove. While it's still a little bit fluid, kinda tilt off certain spots. Move it around a bit, see how it's looking. more the middle there we go I want to tip off a little bit there but not too much there we go bringing that back down I'm gonna go just straight side <coughs> sideways and get off some of this orange and yellow on that side, but not the corner. There we go. Bringing that back. I'm 
I'm loving it. I'm see how I'm actually getting quite cool effects over on this side. Um, it kind of looks like it's selling up a little bit. Not so much over here. A little bit, but not too much. So I may come back up here. I don't want to lose too much of that purple because that purple is actually quite nice and it's becoming quite a yellow artwork. But I want to stretch it over itself and see if it's thinning the paint out that's creating those effects, kind of like what you would do when you do cloud pours. You kind of stretch it and move it. So I'm going to come down this way. I'm more moving the paint now than actually tilting it off. Little bits might come off, but... I'm uh, starting to get some effects up here. Sorry, I might have been holding it out of frame there. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to move it a little bit. Just watch your, your artwork. If you look like you're changing parts you don't want to change, then stop tilting. I'm just trying to see if I can stretch this area a little bit and see if I can get more of those cells popping up. So I always call this I get effects because you do get just different effects with it and you kind of get different effects each time you do it. Um, the one important factor is having a level surface because your paints are quite thin if you're not level they it will make a difference you will keep pouring off um, the side and your, your whole picture will change so just say this side's not level it will pull all of that across and you'll lose a lot of this and that there will get overstretched so you just got to make sure that you're the surface that you're working on is as level as you can get it. Now, I'm just going to scrape the edge and double check. I've got a tiny corner here. But not a lot of paint on it. Now, let's check this back corner. So that's one other thing, the paints are thinner. So sometimes you do have to check that the corners haven't become too thin. I'm just going to pour, not on the actual corner, but off the canvas and just see if I can hit the edge without getting any actually on the canvas. Yep, yeah, that worked well i might do the same with this one actually even if i might pour it off onto my palette knife while it's off the canvas there we go now scrape your edges you don't want your artwork to change too much now, because your paints are thin, if you're worried about it showing up too much on the edges where it dries, paint your canvas with one of the colours that you have used in your artwork. So either a purple, um, either purple or the yellow or the orange, just so you don't feel that it's so noticeable. Um, I think this one will be fine. But it is an option depending on how thin your paints get. Okay, that should be all. So I'm getting quite some good effects on the sides of the canvas too. 
where the paint is um, stretching over itself. I'm getting kind of, on the purple side, I'm getting yellow kind of little mini cells appear. But look at all these beautiful cells that have just naturally appeared throughout this area. Now, um, one thing I probably should have done before I started tilting was torched, but I did forget to. So I'm going to give it a quick torch now. Just to pop the bubbles. Now this is cool. So see where the yellow, orange and purple have mixed in this area and they've been stretched and they've got all these cells that have come up and where the ribbons were, so when you're doing that, these were ribbons and see how it's kind of given it really cool effects. It's like pushed the purple color, squashed it into itself and made these nice like vein, like lightning vein type of things. And you can see them most of it. So there's a whole streak lot over here. And down here, there's little ones that run through when the yellows. So this could be the difference between using two different brand paints. I don't always use two different brand paints, but see how the yellow that's gone into the purple hasn't really actually been pushed together. It's actually spread itself out a little bit. So it's kind of like the yellow wants to be a bit of a, a bully and take over but it's not kind of taking over in a bad way it's creating more effects so really cool i love this you got nice like orange and yellow river pattern running through when you got these streaks and that going across got nice cells appearing this does sometimes these effects do sometimes continue to change for about 20 minutes um, because the paints are thin, it it has more of a chance to react. So, but like, see how over here there wasn't a lot happening? Now we're getting these cells that are appearing through there. The veins are coming up quite nice. I've got a little yellow, I think that might have been an air bubble, a little yellow dot up there in the purple. But um, I like this. I'm super happy. I love this side. If you wanted to, you could stretch... All of that off and bring all of that over um, but I think it would become a little bit too yellow um, I want there to be the, the darker purple there kind of like this side and this side kind of meeting each other into the middle right where the river is but awesome so this is an infinity pour they are fun they do kind of work out different. Each time you do things, you'll get different effects. Um, you, I can't really do one and say, I'm going to recreate that. Even when I've used the same colors um, and everything, I haven't been able to recreate exactly what I created before, which is kind of the fun. It's just hard when you, you want to keep something and someone says, I want one just like that. When you're like, well, I can do something similar, but it won't be identical. But this is it. So I'm going to bring you down for a close-up. Okay, so that is probably the colours that I see with my eyes. As the camera focuses, it's going to try and make them darker. Um, doesn't always like certain colours, or it just changes the, the contrast so they don't come out exactly how you see them. But let's come down. Hide, yeah, there we go. Hide that light a little bit. Actually, I'll turn that one off. Yeah. Makes it a bit darker, but then you need to see the effects. See how you get these cool purple like lightning rivers that run through? And then look at all these cells. All these cells have appeared. You've got that orange and yellow like river 
running through the middle with different effects all over the place more lightning purple lightning effects over here then we come up to the purple corner where the purple looks cool the yellow interacting with it is kind of awesome you're getting more cells appear over here all right look how cool it's just a small part but all different little things happening so yeah, now it's made that without that light that corner is quite dark let me turn it back on there we go but there we are so infinity pour in two purples uh yellow and orange and you can mix up and try to have the colors differently i like to have kind of one tone in one cup and one tone in another cup but um as you can see, they don't overly blend, but they do blend a little bit to kind of make it interesting. So, tell me what you think. So, uh, comment, uh, like, share the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. And when you do, hit all and click the bell. Uh, I think it's click the bell and hit all. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a great night, and I will see you soon for another pour. Okay, bye.